Hola and welcome to episode 31 of Wine with Wanda on Instagram Live. As always, I thank you for tuning in. I love taking this wine journey with you. As always, I provide complimentary ambient sounds of New York City in the background, so I apologize, but it's live and this is real life. But I am so excited about today's guest. She's a force of nature, a true Renaissance woman, a woman of science, a creative woman, a strong, passionate, and knowledgeable voice, and actually, in many ways, the face of wines of Argentina. Yes, I am talking about the one and only Dr. Laura Catena, fourth generation vintner. Now, not only is Laura a Harvard graduate, she holds a medical degree from Stanford University. And for many years, she balanced practicing medicine while working as managing director for one of the world's most respected wineries, Catena Zapata in Mendoza. So I'm gonna bring Laura on in just a moment. As always, I like to do a little bit of an intro. So in 1902, Laura's great-grandfather, Nicola Catena, he was an Italian immigrant. He planted his first vineyard in Mendoza. And today, Catena Zapata is one of the few family-owned wineries in Argentina that is still in Argentine hands. That's pretty amazing. Under the leadership of Laura's father, Nicolas Catena, in the 1990s, Catena took wines from Argentina to new heights, showing the world that Argentina could produce world-class wines. They really were innovative in terms of high altitude viticulture and just showing that Malbec and Argentina were a perfect match. And did I mention that Lauda is also an author? So during our chat, we're also gonna discuss her charming new book. It's an illustrated book called Gold in the Vineyards, illustrated stories of the world's most celebrated vineyards and that retails for $14.99, a great gift for the wine lover in your life this holiday season. So the wines we're gonna taste, I'm gonna bring Lauda on in about 30 seconds. We have the Catena Alta Chardonnay 2017 that retails for about $33. We have the wonderful Catena Malbec 2018. That's about $24 in the U.S. And last but not least, with this stunning, beautiful, elaborate label, it's just gorgeous, is the Malbec Argentino 2017, and that's $120. So we are going to bring Laura on now and let the magic begin. I'm so excited. Ciao. Someone said ciao. Ciao to you. <laughs> Laura. Hello. Hello, Wanda. How are you? you? I love you in your gaucho hat. <laughs> it's the easy solution to not being able to go to the hairdresser. Exactly. I know the feeling. I try to be my own glam squad for these videos. And I think, I think you pull it off quite well, Wanda. I think I need some lessons in, in this from you. <laughs> Well, it's so good to see you. Great to see you too, Wanda. And uh, I just realized that we have an Italian connection because you've spent quite a bit of time in Italy. Yes, you know, my friends tease me for a while. It did seem like I was there every other month. That's <laughs> yes, fantastic. I've been to Italy maybe 15 or 16 times. I really do love it very much. Yeah, so, so you share with me the, the love for, for Italy. You know, you, you never forget that your great-grandfather came from, from somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I see that you're interested in history. And, and I am, as you know, obsessed with history. Yes, me too. <laughs> yes, I was reading your book. I was like, we had a lot in common growing up because I spent a lot of time reading books after bedtime, you know, with the covers over my head my mom's like are you sleeping yeah I'm sleeping <laughs> yeah we all came up with a trick for hiding the light I would just put you know some toilet paper in the hole so that she would think it was dark that was my trick <laughs> I love it I love it. well you know we've met a few times over the years but never really yeah. had a chance to sit down and chat so this is such a great gift for the holiday season to get some one-on-one -on -one time with you so thank you for for doing this Absolutely. Thank you, Wanda, for having me. Yes. Well, you know, you have such an interesting journey. So I always like to start off with a bit of a personal uh, story. So you grew up in a very important wine family around wine, but your original career path was towards medicine. Yes, yes. I, I went to medical school straight out of college. I liked, you know, biology and the sciences, but I couldn't picture myself sitting in a lab and I wanted to help people. So I thought I would combine them. 
But now I realize that I, I'm helping, I think, just as many people making wine. You know, you not are. just the joy that wine brings in moderation, but also the, the people in Mendoza need uh, producers to sell wine so that they can have jobs and they can care about the environment and they can continue with their traditional lifestyle of winemaking. So in so many ways, um, today I, I realize that actually making wine is, is perhaps helping the world more than, than, you know, what one single doctor can do. <laughs> That's true. I love, you know, you started working with your dad in the 90s. You kind of got the itch, I guess, to become more involved with the family business. And I love the way you described it as almost being kind of a Don Quixote type of quest. Yes. So, you know, everyone is so familiar with Malbec now, but back then... It was kind of a rough road explaining it to people. Absolutely. You know, nobody knew Malbec, whereas they should have because it's this ancient grape, 2,000 years old. It's all told in that label. It, it was the most important grape in Bordeaux in the 18th and 19th century, or where, where some of these most, world's most famous wines come from. But it had almost disappeared in Europe, and in Argentina it was being pulled out. And so when we started uh, going to try to sell Malbec, most of the Malbec had been drank in Argentina because Argentines, mm -hmm. you know, they have this Spanish and Italian traditions. Uh, wine is actually the national beverage. You know, just like in other countries, people drink vodka or they drink beer. We drink wine. Yes. And, uh, and so not much was exported. And uh, I have to say that I would go out uh, with a salesperson and we would present the wine. People would love it and they wouldn't buy it because they would say, I can't sell Malbec because nobody knows what Malbec is. And indeed, the world has changed, as you said. Yeah, you know, your father was really an innovator. And I think, you know, one of the things, and I'm sure this must frustrate you, and what you've all done so beautifully at Catena Zapata is to show that Malbec and Mendoza, they're not monoliths that the grape is so expressive and really your research with altitude. And yes. I would just love for you to explain that a bit more. Do people, Absolutely. oh, oh no, Beck is the same. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I like to compare to the Burgundian model where nobody has any doubt that, you know, this row here uh, in mm -hmm. the same Premier Cru vineyard as compared to that row, you know, a few meters away has a different taste. And there are some grapes that really soak up terroir, you know, terroir being that combination of climate and soil and human activity. And uh, it's something that most people don't know about Argentina, but because we have these different altitudes, you know, from around uh, 700 meters elevation to 1500 meters, the climate changes completely. So it's as different as going from the Southern Rhone to Champagne in terms of going from warmer climate to cool climate. But we're in 45 minutes, whereas in, um, are they calling me to go to the hospital? I know, I think they need you. <laughs> um, I, have, I live on a very busy street yeah, in Manhattan. I, I hope they're okay, the person in I the ambulance. I hope so too, yes. been hearing more of them lately, so. Yes, um, yeah. that, that we are all hoping for, for anybody who's ill out there. Um, but um, so in this short, you know, piece of land, you get these different climates and also different soils, because usually the higher altitudes have the bigger rocks, more of the limestone. As you go down, you get more clays and sands. Mm -hmm. And so you have all these, what we call micro terroirs, uh, where the same Malbec grape can give you different flavors. And, you know, what's exciting to me is the fact that it's relatively unknown. So yeah. it's something for us to learn about. And it's a job for me to do, right? <laughs> You're doing it very, you know, I often find myself quoting you. Um, I heard you speak at a luncheon a couple years ago, and you were sharing a story. I guess someone asked you, well, what's next for Argentina after Malbec? And you're like, you would never ask Burgundy what's next after Pinot Noir. Right, and I thought right. that was such a perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> You know, thank you. I, thank I, you, Wanda. I quoted you many times. Oh, good, because I, I believe that, you know, I think um, every human is a little ball of stereotypes and uh, we all have stereotypes. You do, I do, all our, yeah. our listeners today. And I think it's an important job for every person to identify those stereotypes and to break them because uh, life is better if one reduces the, the amount of stereotypes. I agree. I agree. And I think one thing you've done really beautifully in your book as well is to tackle some of that. So when... Yeah. Like, oh, okay, another wine book. I'm like, oh, no, this is not 
just the oh. number one book. I mean, the illustrations, the storytelling. It's just, um, I'm trying to flip through so people can see. It really That's delivers the, that these little nuggets of history. Yeah, you showed a, a photo of Prohibition. Um, well, you know, um, what I realized, because, you know, you and I were just talking about how much we read when we were children. And the truth, oh, yes, <laughs> that's my <laughs> mother reading. There you go. There when she go. was pregnant with my yes. sister. Uh, but, you know, um, and, and it's important that this book is not about Catena. We are one little chapter in the book. It's about the most famous wines in the world. And what is that combination of history, of a family's passion, uh, of luck? and of finding mm -hmm. a very special place. And why is the book illustrated? Uh, and that actually is related to the fact that I loved my ch childhood books. I loved mm -hmm. that, you know how at the middle or beginning of every chapter, there'd be a photo I, or a drawing. Yes. And I would always skip through to look at all the, the drawings first. And then, you know, when you become an adult, all of a sudden the, the, the illustrations end. And I, I never understood why. And you know, there, there's, there's a real growth in comics right now and in illustrated yeah. books. And I think, it's a human need. We are visual beings mm -hmm. and we like to see illustrations and photographs. And, um, and also I've noted that my three children read a lot less than I did, uh, but wow. somehow they seem to know a lot. So they're learning in different ways, you know, so, through social media, through places like Reddit, you know, uh, and they are finding a way to learn. And I thought uh, that I wanted this book to be um, available to all kinds of people, even people who don't like to read, which I have accepted. You know, I, I spent my whole children's childhood telling them, read more, read more, read more. Yeah. I figured, hey, they're pretty smart and, and they know a lot of stuff without reading. So maybe let them watch it on a YouTube video, right? <laughs> no, but this was, I'm going to show the book again for anyone just joining. It's so charming. These great little historical nuggets. You learn about these wonderful families, not just the Gatenas, but also the the Antonori's and yes. the Rothschild. And just, it's just a fun, beautiful book. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Wanda. So, the wine. <laughs> so, I love that we're going to start with the Chardonnay because... Yes. One thing, I've been to Mendoza only once, and I had the pleasure of visiting Catena Zapata. <laughs> I know that. Great Chardonnay coming out of Mendoza. And I think people don't realize that. Um, and actually, I think the Chardonnay was planted there actually before Malbec. Yes. So the Adriana Vineyard, which is our most famous vineyard, it's had six 100-point wines. We wow. planted Chardonnay first because actually our viticulturalist told my father Nothing's going to ripen there. It's too cold. But my father thought, hmm, it's cold, but it's really sunny. So maybe it will. And he wanted cool climate because he wanted concentrated wines with nice natural acidity. And some of the more traditional regions were too warm. And uh, so he was looking for the school climate. So he started with Chardonnay. The Chardonnay did great. And so he said, now I'm moving to Malbec and even Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon. And, you know, his own viticulture said, no, don't, don't do that. That's crazy. And, you know, my dad's uh, just an adventurer. He, he's like a, a child in an 81-year-old body. Because I love it. He loves and he's an economist thing. as yes, well, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And he an really believes, he believes that you have to try things that, uh, you know, uh, do a little research, but then you have to go for it. And uh, I think in, in winemaking and viticulture, sometimes, you know, you do have to do your research because you might mm -hmm. plant the wrong variety, but sometimes you do just have to go for it. Yeah, you have to follow your gut and not be afraid yeah. to step out of the box, which you all have done yeah. beautifully. So I'm going to show the bottle again. This is the 2017 Catena Alta. In the U.S., it's about $33. And you have a great importer wine bow. So anyone looking yes. able to add these wines, it has a store or, or someplace. Yes. Uh, great. Absolutely. But the color, oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's golden. Golden. Uh, yes. <laughs> And, and, you know, actually following up on what you said, Wanda, about uh, people think of Argentina's Malbec or red wine because, mm -hmm. you know, Latins, we are red, you know, <laughs> we are like red wine, you know, uh, but, but actually uh, it's very cold here and we have Patagonia and Antarctica, you know, so the southern part of South America is quite cool. Mm -hmm. You know, to the north in Argentina, you have countries like Brazil that are warmer and that have much better beaches, for example. We, uh, we don't have a lot of palm trees in, in Argentina, you know, although it is warmer towards the north. But this, this part of Mendoza, which is in the middle of the country, right by the mountains, has this perfect, you know, cool climate, alluvial soils, and sunlight. 
And Chardonnay likes cool climate. If you grow Chardonnay in a place that's too warm, you're going to get a flabby Chardonnay. Uh, but if you want richness, if you want minerality, you need to grow it in cool climate. And uh, I think that's something that we need to do more work on to explain how in South America at high altitude, we can have this, this right climate for white wine varieties. Absolutely. And I think you nailed it. I mean, there's such richness and texture here, but the acidity, the minerality, it's very much in balance. It's just, you know, I have a friend who always says, the world doesn't need another Chardonnay, but... <laughs> when it's done well, uh, I think we all yes. could use another I, I'm Chardonnay. I'm not an anything but Chardonnay person. You know, I think that, <laughs> again, like Malbec, there's a reason why a variety lasts for so long. It's because yeah. it tastes good. This would be like saying, you know, I don't need another mousse au chocolat. Like, whoever said that? Exactly. You know? Or I, I, I don't need another piece of chocolate. You know, why do we eat chocolate? Because it's delicious. You know, and I think that, that there's varieties, classic varieties like Chardonnay, Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, that are just so exquisite that they've lasted for thousands of years because they're good. Because they're good. Exactly. <laughs> At the end of the day, it has to be a pleasure. And, and if, do you have any favorite of food pairing with this uh, Chardonnay? Well, this uh, Chardonnay it is made in a style to be very luxurious, a little creamy. Yes. Uh, so it is high altitude, it has the minerality, but it, it also has a lot of texture. We make other Chardonnays that are pure minerality. This one is kind of a mix between, you know, the creaminess and the minerality. Mm -hmm. So it goes really well with things like scallops, a risotto, uh, anything mm -hmm. creamy. I, I think it's a great choice for Thanksgiving turkey, which just passed, yeah, but you just can pass. <laughs> save a bottle for next year. As you can see, I'm not tasting, I'm drinking. Let me get back to work. <laughs> well, you know, one glass a day is good for your health. So if you have little sips of three wines, that counts. I know, it's funny. My doctor, who's a lovely woman, and, she, you know, she's fabulous. And she goes, well, how much do you drink? I said, do you want the real answer? Like, do wine tastings count? <laughs> you know, in the industry, sometimes it's hard to just do that one a day, you know? Yeah. Well, you but know we what try. I do, Wanda, is, um, you know, if I drive somewhere, I, I d just don't drink anything. But I generally spit uh, when I go to a tasting. And I'll, I'll teach you a trick. Uh, oh, so okay. when, I, when I sometimes go to tastings that I know the people, and I really love a wine, I'll actually say, well, can I have the bottle? Because there's always a bottle left. And they mm -hmm. always throw away so much wine. And that then I'll go true. home. And I'll really drink, but I'll spit during the tasting because otherwise, I mean, you could drink a whole bottle of wine at one of these tastings. I, I've done wine competitions like you have, and it's a lot of wine. Um, it is. And, uh, and I usually take a few bottles home. <laughs> I, I'm sure if you ask, they would say yes. Yes. I'm, I'm going to follow your lead once we get back to tasting in That's real right. life. <laughs> Yes, so now yes. we have the Catena Malbec 2018 right. in the U.S. It's about $24. And uh, this says High Mountain Vines. It's right there on the label. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Malbec is a blend of high altitude. And again, as I said before, these vineyards are really close to each other. But you're combining Malbec with very different flavors. So at the cooler climates, you get more of the violets, the minerality, the acidity. And then, you know, in the middle, you get a lot of the mid-palate uh, because there, we have clay soils in, in, the, in some of our vineyards at around uh, 800 meters elevation. And then from the warmer climates, you get a little more of the ripeness and the texture. And when you put all of this together, you get this extraordinary wine, which I call our Chanel number no. five, because oh, it, has to like be, it has to be perfect. And it's, it's kind of a, an affordable luxury, you know? And, um, and this wine is really, you know, multiple little components uh, of the same variety, but which are all very different. And it's, it's really the hardest wine to make because mm -hmm. you have to reflect the vintage, uh, cool vintage, small vintage, warm vintage. Um, and we sometimes change the blend to make the, what we call the perfect wine because it's got to have everything. Uh, and, but it's hard to decide how much to put from each area and each course, component. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's very supple, it's ripe, but it's not jammy. And Absolutely. That, like... that's, that's the high altitude. Um, yeah. And, you know, in, in all the, the old French textbooks that I read from, from the 18th and 19th century, there was one author who wrote, don't ever bottle Cabernet Sauvignon alone. You must always add a large portion of Malbec because ah. Malbec would bring the fruit on the nose 
and the softness because Cabernet, you know, was harvested really early. It was, it's much more tannic. And they thought the Malbec was essential for the softening. Mm. And, and so, so they, they, you know, what you're saying, it's a really big wine. It's luxurious, but with very soft tannins. In fact, if you're at a blind tasting and there's a wine that's not smooth and velvety, it's not Malbec. Ah, good to know. Very good tip. So this last bottle, I mean, I feel like I could just study the label <laughs> for an hour. So you mentioned this is kind of the history. Yes, absolutely. And, and if you see behind me, I actually have the original painting. Ah, it? okay. Wow, so, uh, stunning. Yeah. So this is Malbec Argentino 2017. Little pops of red there at the bottom. Really just yeah. a stunning label. Um, clearly a special bottle. This retails for about 120 so tell us about this yes, very okay. special wine. So I, ha I have a, a bottle over here. So basically, this is the first label in the world to tell the story of a wine varietal. Believe it or not, uh -huh. it's never been done before. Okay. And it's part of my mission to uh, help Malbec get back to its glory because it has been famous many times in mm -hmm. the world. And now it's famous, but not from Europe from Argentina. And so the first woman on the label, this is actually Eleanor of Aquitaine, who was ah, this very okay. famous queen that married uh, the first the King of France and then the King of England. And by marrying the King of England, basically, you know, more than half of France became English. And what did they send to England? Well, what Malbec. better than wine? So <laughs> she had the court of love and they drank Malbec and she she had it as a required court wine. And, oh. and that's how Malbec became famous all, all over the world. It was also very famous in Russia, believe it or not. The, okay. There was a Russian king that thought that his doctor had told him that it, it helped his stomach pain. And so he would drink uh, Malbec to help his stomach ulcer. Actually, normally alcohol is bad if you have a stomach <laughs> ulcer. But, I mean, you know, kings used to do whatever they wanted. Thank God we don't have them, you know, doing their thing anymore just exactly. for the photos. Uh, although there are a few nice characters in, in these yeah. qu queenly families. Uh, but, uh, you know, democracy, that's my thing. Um, okay, so here's Eleanor of Aquitaine. Then the, the middle woman uh, represents the immigrant to Argentina. But also she, re she represents my great-grandmother, Ana Mosheta. And you see she has some arrows. Uh, oh, and this is okay. it's my sister's. My sister was actually uh, the idea behind this label because she has a PhD in history from Oxford. And I asked her, how do we tell the story of the wine? And instead of a PowerPoint presentation, she gave me a label. And we, we did this label with a very famous uh, design company called Stranger and Stranger. And mm -hmm. uh, so she has arrows on her uh, to represent the, the struggle of the immigrant and how difficult life is for immigrants in every country and how difficult it was for the immigrants in Argentina, for the Italian immigrants mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh, and sometimes we forget that, you know, we're past many generations we forget what our forefathers did. Uh, and I think it should be remembered. Um, and then uh, the third one is, this is the, the, the evil oh, character. She, I see her. <laughs> you know, there always has to be a, 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 a you know, like a, 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 villain. Femme, a femme fatale. A, yes. a villain. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's actually an insect. It's Phylloxera, which destroyed all the European vineyards in the end of the 19th century. But actually this, this insect mostly exists in the female form. And that's why oh. they couldn't exterminate it because they couldn't find the males. So actually our villain really is female. So this is partly why my, my sister said, we should make it an old women label. You have all these great yeah. female characters and most of history until recently has been told through the eyes of men. Mm -hmm. So let's tell the story of Malbec through the eyes of women. But believe me for the men out there, uh, we very much like it when men drink this wine. Yes. Uh, we celebrate you too. Uh, so, um, so, and then the last one is my sister and she's sitting on a, on a globe that has South America. And then wow. in the bottom is, is the pyramid that you visited. Yes, Wanda. there it is. There, there, there it, it is. is, the pyramid. So, yeah, so there's lots of little secret things in the label. And there is actually a website called www.malbecargentino.com that will tell you what each character in the oh, label great. is yes really this is a yes. keeper this is a bottle that you save after the wine is gone it's 
supportable piece of art. It's just beautiful. So mm -hmm. tell us about the wine. When did you start making this particular wine? Is it only made in the best vintages? So tell us a little bit um, more. So we started making the wine in 2004, but this new label started in 2015. The okay. wine is actually extraordinary. And, you know, I told my team, uh, I said, listen, when you have a wine with such a beautiful label, you have to make sure that the wine is extraordinary because I would never want somebody to say, oh, this wine is all label. You know, that, mm -hmm. I, that's it. I'm quitting if I hear that. <laughs> so I say, we need to put a wine in this bottle that's as magical as the label. So it comes, the wine comes all from old vines. The average age of wine is 50 years old from two different locations that are two vineyards named actually after two women. One of them is my grandmother and the other one's my great grandmother, the mother of my grandmother. So it's actually, it's a mother daughter wine. I uh, love the, it. The name of the vineyards, old vines, very concentrated. We make this wine to be just extremely uh, decadent. It's a decadent wine. It's all fruit and texture and um, beautiful, you know, uh, sweet tannins, not from sugar but uh, mm -hmm. from, from, from the way that the Malbec tannins are. And uh, it's a vineyard selection. So far, we've been able to make it every year because oh, even on, on cold years, uh, both these vineyards have done okay. Um, but uh, yes, for sure. If there's a vintage that we think uh, neither of these vineyards has performed to this quality, we will not make the wine. Yeah. And how limited is the production? How many bottles in general are you able to make? Of um, so yeah. of this wine, we make around uh, 2,000 cases of 12, so around 20,000 bottles. But that's, you remember, the whole world, Argentina, Europe, US, Asia, we sell wine in over 60 countries. Wow. It's impressive. Yeah, this is really, it's for me, strikes that perfect balance. It's bold, but still very graceful. It's not bulky. It's not flabby. It's just kind of dancing. It's great energy. Thank it's you, really Wanda. Thank you. Very it means a lot for coming from you. Really beautiful wine. So, you know, I mean, I feel like we could go on for two hours because you're just so fascinating. Yeah. But I just want I to give it. you the floor to you know is there's something that you just want to get off your chest already or just some point you want to drive home, something that maybe drives you crazy that people still don't understand about Malbec, Mendoza, or just a point that you really want to, you know, get, drive home before we sign off. Yes, well, um, you know, in, in these months that I haven't been traveling as much, because, you know, usually I travel two weeks out of a month, and yeah. my husband's always complaining, you know, uh, but I, I've had a lot of time to think about our world and the environment. And I think that this is something that the young people are, are very passionate about. But I think that it's really touching all of us. Uh, and I think this epidemic has shown us how fragile we are, the world is, you know, how much destruction uh, we've done to our world. And uh, we actually introduced the sustainability uh, certification to Argentina. It didn't exist until we wrote it. And we worked with Bodegas de Argentina to uh, establish a certificate for Argentine wineries that's now followed by many, many wineries. Oh, wow. And uh, I think Argentina is a place where you know, it's more rural. Uh, we have very few people per, you know, piece of land. Mm -hmm. It's a very wealthy country in terms of natural re resources, but we are losing some of that, that vineyard culture because people are moving to the cities, something that's happening all over the world. And I want to reclaim the life of the vineyard, the life of the people living in the countryside. And, and to do that, you know, the, you, ha you have to think sustainably. You have to think about the microbes in the soil, about you know, how you're taking care of the vines, about the biodiversity. And so what I wanna leave everybody with is the fact that wine has been made by humans for 6,000 years. And it is edible nature because every bottle is different. You know, every vintage is different, but also because a little more or less oxygen goes into every bottle, every actual bottle you get is different. And I think that as a reflection of the world, there's nothing like wine, you know, to speak for a place and for a time in, in human history. And so I, I'm very committed to uh, helping preserve our world and to use, you know, the fact that I make wine as, as the venue to have an impact. And I hope that all of you here today uh, will make that same commitment. I, I know most people who drink wine have a passion for nature. And uh, that's what I'd like to leave you with. Oh, that's a beautiful sentiment. You know, uh, 
I agree 110%, just absolutely. <laughs> so thank Great. you so much. You know, the thank wines you, are beautiful, what your family has contributed to Argentina, but really to the world, you know, not showing that you just make great wines from Argentina, but wines that stand with the great wines of the world. And you really have contributed so much. Here, I, I do have a glass of wine. We have to do a little toast, Juan. Ah. <laughs> Salud. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank and maybe you, by Juan. next year, we'll get to toast in person. Absolutely. I hope so. <laughs> Salud. So Salud. Do I, should I say bye, hang up? I guess we'll say goodbye now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All okay. Right. Bye, Ciao, Wanda. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thanks, bye. everybody. I love you guys. Ciao. <laughs>